Hello. One of my favourite ways to level up in Blender is by recreating shots from existing films. Every time I do this, I come across new challenges I need to overcome and learn something new by doing so. I also wanted to try the new AGX colour space in Blender 4.0. To find a cool shot, I use Film Grab. It's free and has heaps of movies on there. Let's recreate this shot from the film The Killer. First, I'll bring the image into FSpy. It's a free program that lets you estimate the lens and focal properties of an image. Move the points until your axes line up with straight edges in the photo. You can hold shift to zoom in. Check the alignment by moving the gizmo around the scene. Once you're happy, save the FSpy project and import it into Blender using the free FSpy add-on. Working from camera view, I modeled the basic geometry of the scene. This is mostly just edge loops and extrusions. I used the knife tool to cut out the broken pieces of plaster in the roof. I added some extra props based on what I could see in the reference. This looks like a bunch of steel rods tied over a box or some other large object. Since it's off to the side and mostly in shadow, I didn't have to overthink it. Here's one of those I just learned something moments. The original image has a lot of lens distortion that I didn't account for, and I only realized it when I was trying to position this pole. In retrospect, I should have removed the lens distortion before bringing the image into FSpy. Now I'll just have to guess the position. For background assets, you really don't need to strain yourself modeling every one perfectly. Here I'm just duplicating basic shapes around until I have something that resembles a trolley. The wood boards are just cubes that I squished down and stacked with an array modifier. After applying the array, I can select each board and hit F3, Randomize Transform, to add some variance to the rotation. I didn't model everything specifically for this scene. A lot of the smaller props were things I've made earlier, like this box, or from other asset libraries like Polyhaven. There's no point modeling everything unless it's in the brief. Here, I'm adding some planes around the scene to block any light spill and turn it into a closed room. They don't need a texture since they're pretty far out of frame. They're just here to block unwanted light. Now onto texturing. The materials in the original reference are pretty simple. Mostly just wood, concrete, and plaster. I use textures from Polyhaven and textures.com. Just unwrap the UVs and move them around until everything looks nice. I decided some of these edges were too straight, so I subdivided the mesh and used the grab brush in sculpt mode to push some vertices around. This is a good time to start setting up some basic lighting. The main light in this scene was just a large area light. I used the color picker to pull from the original reference. I then added a cube, deleted the principal BSDF and added a principled volume to the volume socket. Bringing down the density lets me control how much fog or mist is in the scene. Adjusting the anisotropy changes the look. The reference shot has these thin, semi-transparent plastic sheets over the windows. I started with the basic principal BSDF and messed around with a noise texture plugged into various sockets like the roughness and the transparency. It's not perfect, but it will do for now. For the one in the center, I subdivided the plane and used a cloth simulation. By adding these faces to a vertex group, I'm able to pin them in place. This prevents the entire mesh from falling through the ground when I hit simulate. I applied the cloth simulation and used the cloth brush in sculpt mode to add some extra folds. I finished up texturing the trolley and the workbench before starting work on the heater. This was just a subdivided cube and the texture was a piece of audio equipment from textures.com. This grill section will work well for the inside of the heater. I made it red by adding a mix color node set to color. I then plugged it into the emission socket to make it glow. The grill is a subdivided plane with a wireframe modifier. Create a curve object, tab into edit mode and delete all of the points. Now select the draw curve tool and draw in a simple curve. Add some thickness using the bevel slider under the geometry tab in the curve properties. I haven't actually seen the film, but Wikipedia mentions it takes place somewhere in France. I tried to find an image of a similar building to use as a backdrop, which I imported using the import images as planes operator. By plugging the color into the emission, I can ensure the image is visible through the fog. Let's add our character. I used a free one from Mixamo named Adam, and this male sitting pose. It's not exactly the same as the original, but it will still get the message across. I imported the FBX into Blender and switched to pose mode to fix the weird left arm situation, as well as straighten the character overall to better match the reference. I actually made a mistake here. I didn't activate auto keyframing so my pose didn't save, and I had to redo this step later. Always make sure you overwrite the keyframes when reposing a character. Mixamo characters are usually a bit too shiny, so I turned up the roughness in the materials. Let's try a full render. 
First, I'll speed up cycles by reducing the number of light bounces. I also clamped the indirect light and turned off caustics. AGX comes with multiple contrast lights, but I usually just use the color balance node in the compositor for more control. Here's the first render. It's okay, but I made a checklist of things I want to improve. Let's start by upgrading the plastic material. I watched a few tutorials on curtains, and the biggest takeaway was adding a translucent shader to the principled BSDF. I also used a rusty metal texture to control the amount of translucency. This new material lets more light through, which pushes the sides of our image closer to the original reference. I still wasn't happy with the straight lines in the roof beams and wall pieces, so I subdivided them and used displacement modifiers to warp them. These window sills stuck out too far, causing an ugly bright highlight. Let's pull them back in a bit. Finally, I used Krita to cut out the building from the original reference. I used the clone brush to fill in sections where the character was. I just wasn't happy with the image I initially used. It was too desaturated and the perspective was off. Here's the second render. Definitely an improvement, but there's one or two things I still want to fix. The major realization I had here was that the plastic sheets covering the windows are on the inside. I don't know how I missed this, but let's fix it. This helps soften the sharp edges on the windowsill. The original image has one or two bright little embers in the heater. Small details matter. Finally, while there isn't really any in the original, I wanted to add some pieces of garbage or ground clutter to help break up the concrete texture. Here's the third render. Let's add some post-processing. My process is different every time, but for this image, a small 2 pixel blur helps remove the CG feel. I then used a filter node set to diamond sharpen, a color balance node to help bring the black levels down a touch and push the overall color to a slight green. You can see the scopes by opening the side panel with the N key. Then some film grain. For some reason the overlay mode in Blender darkens the image more than other software, so I add an exposure node after the grain and plug a value node into the factor and the exposure amount to reduce the darkening effect caused by the overlay. A glare node set to glow can add some nice bloom to the highlights. You can even tint the glow red to simulate film halation, but I didn't for this image. A lens distortion node adds that edge warping I mentioned earlier. Now our pole bends just like the reference. Finally, I rendered out a version without the fog and replaced the main window with it. This better matches the original image, without all the fog covering the background building. Here's the final render. There's definitely still some areas that could be improved, but I'm happy with it overall. I came away from this feeling like I've learned a few more things about Blender, and it's definitely something you should try if you're looking to really upgrade your skill set quickly. If you find this content valuable, please like and subscribe so I know to make more. Thanks everyone. I hope you found the video helpful.